plaintiff, Michael Miller, says he and the defendant grew up in Memphis, and the defendant was a high school basketball star. But after his mother passed away, his life went downhill. Michael is suing his former friend today for an unpaid loan. Defendant Jerome Settles says when he was in high school, his mom committed suicide, and he's the one who found her. After that, Jerome admits that he turned to drugs and alcohol to help ease the pain, and he is still struggling with his addiction to this day. All rise. This court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Greg Mathis presiding. You may now be seated. All right, let's start with you. Okay, sir. I'm gonna go ahead and start off by saying, sir, um, are you familiar with Memphis? Memphis, Tennessee? Yes, sir. I did a, a program there. Okay. All right. Well, we're from the south part of Memphis, okay. Tennessee. You say you're familiar with it, so mm -hmm. of course you know about the upbringing around there. A lot of addiction, a lot of, you yep. know, what comes up, cocaine, crack. Made a woman there. I led a um, candlelight visual okay. for some children, and a woman there came up to me. She was clearly cracking and or alcohol addicted and hugged me and cried and said all five of her sons had been killed in gang wars. Mm. All five her children wiped out. So I know what's going on there. It's one of the uh, highest murder rates and probably it's one of the top 10 murder rates in the country, Memphis is. Right. So no, I'm well aware. I right. had a gang summit there to try and get the gang brothers together, and uh, we met and um, got them to commit to at least violate any of the guys who shot innocent people. I mean, that's the best I could do. They weren't gonna stop getting their money. So I don't know what to tell them when you when they say, "Well, judge, how you gonna get paid? Y'all got some jobs, some livable wage jobs, not." Ten dollar an hour, five dollar an hour jobs. If you got that, then we'll put our guns down and pick up our books. Gotcha. But you don't have, give us a quality education. You don't give us quality job opportunities. Can't if you don't have a good education. What we left to do? Shoot each other with the guns that are shipped in. Sell the drugs that are shipped in. So I understand the realities that you guys live, and however, uh, just got to fight back against it. Understood. And so. And it seems like you've probably done that. You seem uh, well prepared for life. Tell yes, me sir. about yourself. Okay. Well, I'm 36 years old, sir. I have a wife, six beautiful children, See? amazing family. See? And uh, how long you been married? Uh, two months now. The six children. How many mothers, sir? Three. You associate you're in all of their lives. All of them. And you can afford all six. All six stay with me, sir. Okay, good, there you go. Hats off to you, and that's the type of example we want to show America about black men from impoverished communities, yes, what they might call the hood or the ghetto or what have you, because those examples aren't there enough, and people don't know they exist in the hood and in poverty. They call their own drugs, or all the shooting each other. So that's why I wanted to hear about that. And I was a little nervous until you said all six of them live with you. Then that cleared any concern about you got too many women to jump around to see the kids. You got three households to go to. You got three households to pay money to. You got that. But now you're saying they're all with you and they're seeing daddy every day or night. So that's what I want to hear. And I'm impressed with that. Congratulations and thank you. Thank you, y'all. So tell me more. Okay. And uh, me being in their lives and one them with me, that 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 stirred me away from from that addiction that's going on in the neighborhood. I didn't want to go down that path. What I seen, my family, I got some friends, guys from high school, kind of went through a whole lot. So I didn't want to I didn't want to choose that. And I was with them, you know, on some occasions as they was doing some things. But I didn't want to stay on that path. So my grandma taught me how to cook when I was younger. So I just took my talents. When I got older, when I had my, uh, when my first daughter was born, when she came into the world, that's when I really went full fledged with the cooking. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't, I didn't stop. I built a passion for doing it. What I learned from when I was young and put my own flavor on it, and I moved on from there. So that's what I do. I got a little cooking business. Sir. Good. Yes, sir. All right. Proud of you. Mm -hmm. And where do you know the defendant from? 
I, I met him through my oldest brother. He went to school with my oldest brother. He just so happened to stay in the same area of neighborhood that I have. And he like, oh, I ain't know that was your brother. Yeah, you know, when you see somebody, you're like, yeah, that, that's how I met him. I met him like over about 10 years now. But my oldest brother been knowing him, you know, since high school, since they was high school buddies. And uh, Jerome was the high school basketball star. He was the high school star. We, talk, we talking 30 and 10 over there, you know? Good, you look him up on YouTube, everything. But I think when, when his mom passed away, that's, that, that, that's, what, that's what did. Yeah, and it can go either way. Either, that was at the height you, of his basketball. Like, I understand. At that time. But you either go way up or you let it take you down. Yes, sir. Yeah, that was eight months out of jail when my mother died. Took me up as an inspiration. Not down and let her down. Right. Wanted to make her proud and those who may have criticized her regarding my behavior. So I always tell people now when they congratulate me about things, I kind of feel, particularly the folks from Detroit who were her friends and others who we went to church with and had more means, and she had to control this bad boy, Gregory Mathis, who jumped around and got in trouble all the time. And these three other boys she had living in the projects without a man, they put her down now. Oh, Alice Mathis sure did a good job with that boy. <laughs> oh, you see what that boy did? You see what the Alice boy did? All the redemption in the world, but first they wouldn't even let her in the church because of me. The woman there came up to me, she was clearly cracking and or alcohol addicted and hugged me and cried and said all five of her sons had been killed in gang wars. Mm -hmm. All five, her children wiped out. Plaintiff Michael Miller is suing his former friend who admits he became addicted to drugs and alcohol after his mother committed suicide. Go ahead, sir, you give me some background on yourself. And um, he gave me a little insight to what happened to your life at a critical age, but why don't you tell me? Well, I'm Jerome Shuttle, and um, I'm from Memphis, Tennessee, and it's been kind of hard on me because since it, I haven't been trying to blame it on you know, my mom passing, but the way she passed, and it, it, it was really hard for what me. What happened? Um, came home from playing ball one day, and I noticed my mom's car was there, and she used to be at work. It was early in the morning. I mean, early in the, in the day. She would be still at work. So when I came in, I had found that she was dead, but she had to, uh, committed suicide. And um, it was kind of hard for a while just to get the image out of my head, you know, of a, just what I saw. and. Reaching out to people, I have nobody, no help. So I reached out to drugs and alcohol, and it kind of took me down the road. Like you said, you went up, I went down. Mm -hmm. And it's been kind of hard. I've been trying to get myself together over it, but every time I do it, kind of like it pulls me right back now to it. How old are you? So the folks will know the uh, extent trauma can last and affect someone. How old are you now? I'm 43. All right. And I was 43, and that happened. How old were you? 20, when, when 22 you, when I found 22 when you're. When I found Mother her. passed. Yeah, over 20 years, it's still the trauma still has the same sting, I'm sure. Um, what have you done with your life, though, other than, I mean, all your days since 22 have been spent getting high? And secondly, no, your mother no, passed when no. you were 22. What had you done up until 22? Oh, I was playing basketball on the road up, man. I was going to college. I had got college offers. Mm. I was positive. I had... Uh, I offered to go to the Marines. I passed the test for Marines. I had different options I could do. And it was like just, it was just a, I was going up, as I say. I was I was trying to find out what I was going to do with my life. That was what I was at the point. I came from college, came home, you know, trying to figure out what kind of job I'm going to have for my life and everything. And then it happened, and I never made it back because of what happened to my mom. But then now I'm just, um, I was, Cutting hair to be a barber, you know, and I was trying my best to get myself back together and get right. But I just ain't never had. How long you been cutting hair? About 10 years, 30, about, about, a little bit over 10 years. Well, I've been cutting paperwork hair for it all my not? life, but not just cutting hair. To you get any paperwork for it or not? Yes, I have an EIM uh, e e number. Good. All right. 
Well, no, does that allow you to comply with the state requirements for barbers? That, that's, that, that's exactly right. But um, every okay. time I get to doing that, like I said, I, I got trapped into girls and act hard. Okay, so you're okay. saying that's been your obstacle and it continues to be an obstacle for you. That's what you're saying? Sure did. And that's the type of uh, person that is addicted to drugs that I like in here. Not somebody's coming in here lying and trying to deceive me and just insulting my uh, drug meter. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, so I appreciate you and uh, if you would like uh, and except we'd like to offer you some help with that. Yes. In a variety of ways we may be able to help. Um, I'll let my staff talk with you. All right, tell me about the loan. All right, when Jerome, when he came around me, he said that what well, he was just talking about his EIN and everything, he, he was going to need some help getting that and also uh, clippers, capes, things you may need for what he had going on with the barber thing. So I'm like, okay, man, cool, how much you need? He said, well, I'm gonna need to start out with like $500. And I was like, man, that's kind of steep on me right now. You know, I ain't doing number selling plates and things like that, in which I had it at the time, but not had to uh, give. Right. And I'm like, well, Jerome, close friend of the family. I, I know of what we talking about now, and addiction and all of everything he got going on. I, I pre of knew of this. Before me giving And what it, did he need the money for? To buy clippers and uh, things he needed to start to cut in the hair with. He needed clippers. He needed a cape. He said he needed more brushes, more spray, more bags. He needed all that, right? So I said, okay, 500 You want to start out with that? That's cool. And I was like, uh, when are you going to pay me back? So he was like, man, you know, it ain't going to take me no time to run up some heads right quick. And I, I got you. If I had a 50 here, 70 here, or whatever, I got you. Even the five hundred dollars, I'm like, okay, cool. All right, so time went on by. As I look up, like three or four months went by, hadn't received a payment. Like, but I wasn't saying nothing like to him. Like I was seeing him, we speaking everything. I ain't say, hey man, with my money, you stay right around the corner. I see you every day. I'm thinking, okay, well, Jerome, you getting on his feet, gonna. Go ahead and take care of me. When I came in, I had found that she was dead, but she had to, uh, committed suicide, and um. It was kind of hard for a while just to get the image out of my head, you know, of a, just what I saw. And reaching out to people, I didn't have nobody, no help. So I reached out to drugs and alcohol, and it kind of took me down the road. Like you said, you went up, I went down. Plaintiff Michael Miller is suing his former friend, who admits he became addicted to drugs and alcohol after his mother committed suicide. He coming here talking like he's so slick. He knows so much. I'm from South Memphis. I know the game back and forth. I know how it go, Yon. I came up in the hood. I didn't seen it all. Well, you ain't seen enough dope fiends for you to think that you can trust getting your money back from a dope fiend. Give me a break. You sound crazy. Don't you ever tell nobody you from the street life again. Tell them you ain't never looked at it even out the window. Tell them when the game was going down outside when you lived in the hood, you right. might have. Your mama came and closed the curtains. <laughs> Said, I don't even want you to see the game going down. She might must have, because you know zero about it. You don't trust a drug addict. <laughs> I mean, gee, he's laughing, man. Yeah. Anybody know? Don't you ever tell nobody. But it's the truth. You have a contract. <laughs> tell all the parties. No, no, no. Hey, tell me you're going to be a barber. I will never. <laughs> oh, you're going to sign this. I will never, because you ain't going to keep insulting the game. Uh, I will never <laughs> say I'm from the game at all, ever. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> and witness, you're going to be a witness. Yeah, witness <laughs> thereof. Yeah. Doyle's oh. witness. Oh. <laughs> Never say you from the game no more. <laughs> and you can get locked up. Put criminal penalties. That ain't even a civil case. I want that to be a crime if you ever tell anybody you from the streets again, but you loan money expecting to get paid back from a known crackhead. No. Screw. Admit it. He probably admitted to you before, hasn't he? He probably did it before you gave him the money. Now you know I'm a crackhead, but you give me that 500. You may or may not. Hey, Hopefully, crazy. before I hit that thing, I might try to think of that 500, but I don't know. Oh yeah, I trust you. I know you'll get it back to me. Can I tell you something? Yes. Okay, the four to 500, right? All right. It was one incident. This before the 500. 
He like, man, like I'm low on gas and everything, man. You got like $20? I'm like, yeah, I'll give you $20. Give him the 20 Go get some gas from the store, whatever else he buy at the store, whatever. Boom. So I'm like, all right. So this two days later, I'm trying to get something. I can't remember what I was trying to get from the store. But anyway, I saw him at the store and needed the 20 right? So I was like, hey, man, you got the uh, 20 for me right now? He he tell me, no, I ain't got it. Why you coming off at me like that? So boom, all right, this is what I got from it. You know, I'm this tall and he this tall. All right, so I walk up, I'm like, hey, man. So I'm thinking I'm talking out of him and everything. Everybody around us looking at us like, man, do y'all see how short Mike is and how tall Jerome is standing down asking him about this $20? I'm like, hey, man, can I get my 20 That's the reason we standing here today, Yana. It's been three years and I ain't got that 500 back yet. Three years. That's what you get, thinking you're going to get 500 back from a known admitted drug addict, sir. You talking about you seeing him go to work every day. You had to go to work for the drug. Yes, sir. But, but like, I, I do got respect for him. He's a friend, and I really want him to have the help he need, because if he ain't got the help, how he going to pay me back? You, you know right. what I'm saying? And that's what <laughs> we going to do for help, him, get you know? help. And I, I want to say that part much for him. That he's a true friend to me regardless. And let me say the only mistake you made money. in my opinion, because this is what I do, but I still, when relatives and friends who I know are drug or alcohol addicted ask me for something, I'm paying the retailer. That's who I'm paying or I'm having somebody pay the retailer. I'm either charging it on my car by phone for that relative or friend who happens to be drug addicted so that I know, yeah, you need it, I got it, I'll help you get what you need, but I'm not putting cash in your hand. That's my point. Don't put cash in the hand. It's just smart. If, if you're that concerned and compassionate, then take that one step because they might not meet the need that they have. They might earnestly have a need to take care of business. You put the cash in their hand, that business is out the door. And the pipe is in the door. So you pay whatever it write the check to the facility. I had a buddy of mine call me. He had the game down. Oh, he was you couldn't resist this game. Was, <laughs> this was game proof. Game proof. <laughs> uh, my woman, she had a little problem. Her organ was breaking down or whatever at that point. And she so he says, and I believed him. And so he says, I need ten thousand for her treatment. I get 10,000 cash, oh. you know? Give me the name of the hospital or the clinic. I'll write the check to them, because he's close enough to me for me to do that. Ah, well, they don't take checks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm back. Well, I'll send a credit card. Pay by credit card by phone. Call him back. They want the person who owes the debt to pay direct. <laughs> I said, so you're telling me to save your woman's life, they won't take the money from no anybody else than her. I said, what if she was incapacitated? Does that mean they wouldn't treat her and the money's laying right there because she won't hand it to them? That's great. So I make a fool out of people who I, try to tell you crazy stuff. I got you. So of course, by the end of that, day or two of back and forth and went from ten thousand to five hundred dollars <laughs> and so i was willing to send the five <laughs> ten thousand how you can only bring cash and it can only be delivered by the person who's paying the bill <laughs> yeah, that is be ready crazy. for that all right, and find out a way to work around it. That's part of the life we live when we overcome the obstacles that many of our loved ones are still dealing with. Yes, sir. We can't cut them off. We can't. We shouldn't cut them off. We shouldn't run away from them. We shouldn't disassociate ourselves from them. We should stand there, be an example of what they can do. We should stand there and give them the wisdom and knowledge that we have earned and learned. We should stand there and assist them the best way we can without hurting ourselves. But then use your common sense too. You know who you're dealing. All right, that's my advice to you and everybody else who's watching. That's why y'all get these long stories because I want to educate y'all a little bit on how to handle this. We had to control this bad boy, Gregory Mathis, who jumped around and got in trouble all the time. They put her down now. Oh, Alice Mathis sure did a good job with that boy. <laughs> 
Oh, you see what that boy did? You see what the Alice boy did? All the redemption in the world, but first they wouldn't even let her in the church because of me. Plaintiff Michael Miller is suing his former friend, who admits he became addicted to drugs and alcohol after his mother committed suicide. Go ahead, sir. I'm sorry. What happened in this instance? He said I felt three like years. I didn't I know it was three years. I felt like you know, I was cutting his hair after he gave it to me for free. So I just felt how like... How many cuts did you do for free? I, I can't remember how many. Over five? Over ten? Over ten. And did you ever discuss I it never, being uh, I never, applied toward the debt? I never said nothing about that. About when he asked for the debt before suing you, did you ever say, well, I thought maybe them haircuts would take care of a few of those few... Kind of lost touch with Mike. Mike had moved on me, and I lose my phone in, in the situation yeah, I am. But when he came to you, he got you here. So when you knew you had to come here, why couldn't you have called and said to him or otherwise communicated with him that, hey, I thought some of those haircuts might apply. You don't want to apply any of those to it? then y'all could have made sense of each other. But you're so used to lying and being slick, you can't even tell the truth. No, uh, it ain't about being slick, but then I just didn't have... Everything fun. about drug addicts is being slick. Stop it. <laughs> Your whole life is designed around being slick, from the moment you wake up to the moment you crash at 4 in the morning when everything gone and ain't nothing, you didn't check the carpet. <laughs> it ain't nothing. <laughs> ain't no more in the residue, nothing. You just straight through. All right. Uh... <laughs> I'm trying to hold it. <laughs> I'll let y'all go. We wasting too much time. He has no defense to the $500 debt, so I'm going to grant you your judgment, and we look forward to working with you. Thank and you. Uh, I appreciate you coming in here with honesty, and we're going to do all we can for you. Yes, thank you. All right? God bless both of you guys. Proud of you taking care of your children all under the one roof. You're showing them all some emotional attachment. You're providing for them. Hopefully, it's not in a impoverished community that has a bad school system. That's the only risk you run when you have a lot of children that you might not be able to provide an upper income life. Upper income or even upper middle class means good education. And that's the most important element of a child's life so that they can prepare themselves for adulthood and you don't have to take care of them anymore. They can take care of themselves. That's why education is so important. You can't take care of yourself. If you can't deal with society, you can't handle your business, put it that way. You can't handle your business if you don't have a decent education. So beware of that. That's all. All right? $500 is the judgment. Good luck Thank to you, Thank you, sir. <laughs> Uh, Jerome, uh, I just want you to know, man, that at the end of the day, yeah, we here is three years later. I, I want the money, but what I want for you most is to get the help that you really come here for, like the help you need, man, to get back on your feet so you can be better. You know I appreciate what I'm saying? it. I knew it was going down when you had one side of my line here and the other side <laughs> up here, but guess what? We're going to work that I out and we're going to fix that. You know? I got you. I hope you get the help you deserve. And he said, from the looks of it, he got something, you know, what well, they can help you out with. And I hope it, it helps you out 100% in your life, your wife and your kids and your journey, man. Appreciate it. I want to say that much. I really appreciate it.